Welcome to Grover Load. We finally have an update from Intel on the 13th and 14th gen instability issues. Before we get to their statement on it, let's just do a quick recap here and give you my thoughts along the way. We had Wendell from Level 1 Techs do a great in-depth analysis of the crashes from um, a game company or game crash logs. He did an excellent job there. Go take a look at that video. Gamers Nexus also had some stuff. Um, new information, some tips, reports about oxidization, everything else. Go take a look at their video, and I hope that they do actually get some um, analysis of the oxidation to see, um, just to be able to see that. I think that that stuff's really cool, but I know it does cost money over there. So go support Gamers Nexus, so I can, <laughs> so I can also uh, have the luxury of seeing that analysis there. But as we get into what is going on here, we had just after Wendell's stuff, then it seemed like at Level 1 Techs, his analysis and his going through stuff, it seemed like it kind of opened up the floodgates for game companies to go through. I also want to say that um, over at, uh, who was it? Tech Yes City, I want to give a shout out there because he went through and he's gone back to a 10th gen if I recall and he did, had a uh, analysis or whatever having problems with disk I.O. and some reports there of maybe that the I.O. Um, spot on the die is not, there's some bugs in it. So I do want to, over at Tech Guest City, there, he's doing a great job over there. Wanted to mention that too because I don't know if Intel's response will fully you know, blanket fix everything, but it's, you know, it's worth a try of what Intel has going on before they might have to do, I mean, Intel does not want to have to do a mass recall because that would be financially a huge hit. But before we get into Intel statement, let's talk about, you know, we had some adjustments from Epic Games saying, or adjustments, guidelines, if you have frequent crashes on Fortnite related to 14th and 13th gen processors, that's a great one to come out with, right? If you have a processor that crashes a lot in our game, here's some fixes. It's not our game, it's the processor. That's how bad it is right now. I mean, Bill Zoid even talked about it too. He did some, I like listening to Bill Zoid every um, now and again, getting his in depth analysis of stuff because it's always fun to. Uh, <laughs> Listen to his ramblings, I, I think. It's it's fun for me, I should say. He did a lot of that. So you had Fortnite going there and saying, hey, we have some, you know, if you're having issues, this is a huge title, here's the workarounds. And then Alderaan Games, which they advise the customer, hey, uh, we're switching our, our servers to AMD because we can't, uh, we can't deal with all these crashes. You should do the same. And Intel, Intel fully has the microcode out, fully starting to show that these are that these issues are fixed, that they're beyond the stability issues. Performance is still in the range where they said it should be. I think that, or I'm in a position where I can't, you know, have somebody go build a system around the 13th or 14th gen. I would not recommend it. Um, it because if you build something and then six months from now, even with the microcode updates, there is an issue, it just seems like that is, you know, for me, I just don't want to be in there. And remember when AMD had the exploding chips, it was, we are going to, you know, make sure everyone is gets a new processor, make sure that this is all taken care of, and very quick on it, whereas Intel... In May, they said we will have it, or beginning of May, maybe late February, or no, April, uh, they said you will have an update at the end of May. I think it was May, right? And here we are in late July, and we're finally getting an update. Now, I was reading video cards, and they had a statement from Intel, and Intel claims that their extensive analysis I hope it was extensive. I just don't 100% know. They said that they have uh, elevated operating voltages that is causing this instability issue. And they say on some of the 13th and 14th gen processors. Um, their analysis of the processors, of the return processors confirmed the elevated operating voltage is stemmed from a microcode algorithm resulting in incorrect voltage request 
to the processor. Intel is delivering a microcode patch, not to be confused with the prior microcode patch that Intel had already um, had already announced, which addresses and so this which addresses the root cause of exposure to elevated voltages. We're continuing validation to ensure scenarios of instability reported to the Intel regarding its core 13th and 14th gen desktops are are addressed. Intel is currently targeting made August for the release patch so next month hopefully that is there and it doesn't slip and that's going to be to the partners for the following the full validation now here is the interesting part of Intel's statement Intel is committed in making this right making this right with our customers we continue asking the cus any customers currently experiencing instability issues on their Intel core 13th and 14th gen desktop processors Reach out to our Intel customer support for further assistance. And that's the end. Intel should have said so that we can make this. I know that they already said that they're going to make it right. But they should say, you know, so we can take care of our customers 100%. We won't, or, you know, take care of our customers. We don't want them to having to deal with this issue. And, you know, just to reconfirm that side of things. Now, Intel PR did go on, you know, because there was an ox oxidation uh, issue that was mentioned by Gamers Nexus. We can, they had said that they confirmed that there was the via oxidation manufacturing issue on some early 13th gen processors. However, the issue was not the root cause and addressed in manufacturing improvements and s screens in 2023. So they don't think that this is contributing to the problem it's probably a different problem but um, if you have a state of instability issue uh, I'd be contacting Intel right now the I I don't know if you have the elevated volt voltages right for a period of time does that degrade it enough that's just going to be always unstable once the microcode is out if that's the case you know Intel should be you know, RMAing your processor right away, and if and just exchanging them out. That's how I think Intel should approach this. In fact, Intel should have kind of said, you know, made some of that guidance if that's the case in their statement. I like that Intel has finally said something. I mean, granted, we're getting close to the AMD Ryzen 9000 series release. There's going to be reviews of their processors, and people are trying to decide if you use the Intel baseline or if you use, you know, Intel Extreme Profile on the motherboards. If you can, you know, trust that these processors are going to be stable through the whole testing. You know, there's all these questions that are being asked. And here we are where Intel finally gives a statement out a few days before, you know, I'm guessing reviews are going to go live here on the AMD 9000 series. Where does this leave you as a consumer? And those consumers really have a lot of questions, I think. You know, if you bought a 13th or 14th gen, I did not upgrade my kids, they're still in the 12th gen. But, um, and you're waiting for something, if you have the problems, you're contacting Intel, or you're worried that your, your processor might, you know, develop a problem, this is, you know, hopefully some reassurance, but I'm guessing you are going to have questions on if it's been having these elevated voltages in the microcode, was there permanent damage done to my processor in the long run? If they get the microcode and I already had damage done, is this going to be able to work around it? Now, um, maybe it's fine. Maybe Intel and their algorithm is dropping it a little enough where you don't have to worry about stability issues. But, you know, one thing to keep in mind is did this, you know, is it just a frequency voltage issue or is it just operating elevated, or elevated voltages in an area where it shouldn't have been elevated to begin with? There's many different questions I have and right now it won't, we won't really know until we get this patch out, until this is patched in microcode, until we test and even then it may be a while. So I do hope, you know, Intel is saying, Intel's committed to making it right with their customers. 
that is a great statement right there, Intel. And I hope that you come up with a little bit more on making sure it's made right. If so, you know, if it needs to be that all processors that if you've had an instability issue, please contact us so that we can make sure that it is right, which is a new processor. Um, hopefully make that clear. I, you know, my Intel said that it doesn't affect mobile processors, so that's a good thing. But um, I, I would like to see here kind of hoping a little bit more just to keep putting customers at ease because you don't want customers to have that seed of doubt in them. Um, processors that they bought, you know, issues that they've had with, you know, maybe a processor crashing or whatever else, and you're kind of on the fence until if you want to, ref you know, ex RMA it or not. You know, that's one of those things where I think you side on the caution of RMA, even if it hits your bottom line because long term that customer is more valuable and I, I you know me personally you know when I do stuff you know and work with a client I make sure that the client feels like they are getting a good bargain they're getting a good deal they're being taken care of so that when they come back and they want to come back to me and I think that Intel as a corporation should be doing the same thing kind of like what AMD did when their chips were exploding the, the X3Ds because of, you know, bad microcode or their um, basically same area. That needs to be just, just take care of the customer because in the long run, they're going to be talking, they're going to be, you know, f basically your your customer base of, of outreach saying, oh yeah, I had an Intel processor and it blew it up. Intel didn't take care of me. That's going to be a much worse look and if you don't just take and eat the cost of a couple processors now than not being able to sell, you know, hundreds of processors later. I get that those are smaller numbers, but expand it out to Intel's level so you can kind of see it. But let me know if you think that this statement is good enough. I'm glad Intel has finally got to a statement. It took way too long. They should have had something out at the end of May and had an official statement. Remember, Intel did blame the motherboard manufacturers first. Yeah, a lot of blame was put on the motherboard manufacturers. I, there's comments on my videos about how it's the motherboard manufacturers on some other videos I did about this problem. Uh, it turns out it wasn't really the motherboard manufacturers, even though I do believe Intel should have did a much better job with the motherboard manufacturers and testing and making sure they're aligned with the Intel spec. It seems like this came down to, well, Intel says it's microcode, and if that's all, you know, a bad boosting algorithm, or bad uh, operating voltage algorithm, that can be a, um, I can only imagine how tricky that would have been to find um, there. So with that, leave it in the comments below what your thoughts are, and thank you so much for watching Grave Alone and helping this channel grow. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, watch another one of my videos. That really, really does help out the channel. And until next time, God bless.